Good morning, everybody. Who's excited to be here at church today? Anybody? Come on. Is anybody excited to be here? I'm excited to be here. I feel like I haven't been here in just too long. Missed you guys last week, but it's good to be back home again. Oh, my goodness. So I just want to take one moment, welcome you here. We're so excited for you to be here, especially our first-time guests. Can we give it up for all of our first-time visitors today? We're so excited for you because it's a big step to come to a new church, and we can appreciate that. And so we just love that you're deciding to spend your Sunday morning with us. We have a mission here at the church. You can say it with me if you know it. It's to be a lifeline by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. Amen. This is a great time to take out your bulletin uh, insert there. There's a place to take notes in there. Or if you're a little bit more techie, like I like to be techie, you can get on the Version Bible app. And you can find Lifeline Church. You can even make it your church. I don't know what benefit that is, but you can find us on there. And then you can go under the events tab and allow location, and it'll give you all the notes, all the scriptures, everything going on. And you can follow along with the message today in the YouVersion Bible app. Pretty cool, huh? Well, try it out. I think it's going to be awesome for you to follow along. We got a good one for you today. Before we jump in, I want to let you know of something really exciting coming up. You probably had to move this card out of your way when you were walking, when you're sitting down there. This is a life group season coming right up starting September 10th. Who's excited for life groups? Oh yeah, like 30 of you. Awesome. That's cool. That's cool. We'll get the rest of you. We'll get the rest of you. Even for babies. Yeah, they got groups too. Yeah, we, do. we really do. We really do. Let me tell you a little bit about our life groups here. We know that the most connected person at any church are people serving on the team or involved in life groups. You just, you just become like aware of everything going on. You, you feel like you're a part of, the, part of the crew, and it really takes your spiritual journey to the next level just because of that relationship that comes in. So we've got really cool, there's a lot of groups to start right now. You can sign up for some right now, even though we're launching them September 10th, we have marriage groups going on with child care provided. Like you drop them off here, then you can go to a marriage group. I know I just got like five more couples to go to life groups right there. You're like, child care? I'm there. I'm all set. It's not even child care. It's an actual experience for them. Just, I got to keep going though, because I'm so fired up about that. We've got pickleball as a group, like just all kinds of stuff. There's like there's some pickleballers right over there. They love it. I'm telling you why. So if you show up, just, you know, bring your knee pads because they will spike it on you or whatever pickleballers do. I'm not sure exactly. More of a golfer myself. There is a golf group too. And then your kids. We, we have for all ages, no matter, like, even if you don't want to go to a life group, you can come on Wednesday nights and drop your kids off and they will have a Bible teaching, a fun time where teachers are actually teaching them about Jesus. And you can go on a date with your spouse. Like you could do whatever you want. Like you can go and hang out at home and watch Netflix and then come and get them later on. I'm, well, because we're going to take care because we, we think kids deserve to have groups too. All right. So that's, how, yes, that's right. Yeah. little golf clap right there. I'll take it. Absolutely. That's on Wednesdays. And so we've got a lot of groups coming up. Um, get excited about that. Amanda, would you take so much. My, my hands are full and I'm going to start to wave them around everybody. So before, last, last little thing, last little thing. We are two weeks in. We got one week left in our 21 days of prayer. Has anyone been enjoying this like I've been enjoying it? Like I've been like so involved in 21 days of prayer. It's been life-changing for me personally and I hope that you are getting as much as me out of this or at least something out of it because we do this twice a year. We, we pray for 21 days twice a year. There's a couple reasons we do that. Um, the first is because we like to precede seasons of growth where your friends, your family tend to start coming to church during certain seasons. I'm not sure what is up with that, but back to school time is one of those. And we want to be spiritually ready to receive people who are coming. We don't want people to come to church looking for God and only find us. We want them to find the Lord. So we're going to seek God and pray that they have an incredible experience um, and a life-changing experience right here at the church. So that's why we pray for 21 days. And the, the second reason is for you, because I heard that 21 days is, a, is the exact amount of time that you really want to build a habit. You build habits over 21 days, and summertime happens. You go out of town. You start to lose track of the normalcy of maybe devotional life or coming to church, and we just want to take 21 days to get back to center and, and to 
to refocus our lives so that we can finish out the year really strong with the Lord. We, just, we know that people are in that season sometimes, and so we want to create space for you to, to, as a group, come back to the Lord. So 21 days, uh, it concludes next week. We've got one more week, and so we're going to preach on prayer a couple more times. And I really hope today's message has an impact on you, because for me, this one's real personal to me, real, real personal. Um, so I, I know this, that we all have things in life that we want. I don't need to ask for you to raise your hand if there's something in life that you want. I, I already know. I already know it. I'm sure of it. There's things in life that you want or even need, but even just some things you want. Like uh, maybe uh, there's like a, your car's all broken down. You, you want a new car, a, a better job, uh, a restored relationship, more money, good grades. I don't know. Boys want girls to notice them and girls... Who knows what girls want? I, don't, I have no idea. You don't know either. Come on, admit it. You don't know. You don't know. I'm just kidding. I get myself in trouble so often at church. It's just ridiculous. But nobody, nobody really knows. But So there's some things that you want. There's some things that you need. But maybe it's something really important. Maybe it's something really important, like a restored marriage. Okay, let's get real. Maybe there's some things that are not just things you want, but things that you're just desperate for, things that you really really want to see happen. Um, restored merits and maybe a physical healing, like you're going through some sickness, you're going through a hard time, a big conflict that's just wrecking your life, and every day you wake up thinking about it, and you just can't seem to get past it. Some things that you want, some things that you need. The list could go on and on, but no matter who you are, no matter what age, no matter where you're from, I know that there are things that every single person wants and needs, but we just can't seem to do anything to make any progress, to make any serious headway about it. Um, this is why prayer is so important. And the, the, the topic, that I, the direction I kind of want to go today, um, I want to introduce this by, by talking about my, uh, my daughter. Any parents in the room? Okay, show of hands. I want to see how many parents we have today. Like everybody, okay? Aren't some of you kids? Like every single person is a parent or has somebody in their life that kind of is that like a parent, like maybe there's a child figure, but um, I have some kids. I have some kids. I have a 19-year-old, an 8-year-old, and just recently a 7-year-old. Just as of yesterday, Evan turned 7. That was really fun. But I want to talk about my 8-year-old for just a second, my 8-year-old daughter. I'm going to owe her a dollar. I, I owe her a dollar for telling stories about her. That's our, little, that's our little agreement. Every story I tell, it's not free, Dad. It's not free. You can't just like... You can't just use me. <laughs> you can't just use me. But this story is worth it. This is, I'm going to get every inch of this dollar. Um, she knows how to get what she wants. She just knows. She's an eight-year-old little blonde thing, and she just knows. She will ask me for TV all the live long day, all, all day long. And she'll come at me from the left side, from the right side. I'll be sitting on the couch, and she'll like come up beside me like sneak up on me. She'll ask me nicely. She'll be like, dad, can I have some, some TV? And then she'll get excited. Dad, I want some TV. I haven't had any all day. She'll start to leverage. She'll start to argue. She'll, TV, I haven't watched any. Like she just had all, she pulls all the stops and she never, ever gives up. She is so consistent. Baby, I love you, but seriously with the TV. And then of course I just am like, Shh, okay, Okay, God, and, but what's, this is what I want to tell you is she's actually being very godly in her behavior. You, th that surprised you, didn't it? Like, and I'm being godly when I give it to her. Ah, see, I'm just not going to like take care of myself for a minute. But let me explain why. I want to read to you a, uh, a story from the Bible, from the mouth of Jesus, um, about getting something you really want or something you really need. Jesus says this himself, so there's no refuting it, Okay. Um, this is just after uh, he gives us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Ch take it easy. It's not an AA meeting. Just, just relax. Everything's fine. I got like three laughs on that one. Thought I was going to get more. Everyone's keeping it really close to the chest right now. Come on, Lifeline. I know who you are. Come on. It's all right. I see you. The Lord's Prayer. Uh, and, but right after, after that, this is where the story comes in. See, the disciples would see Jesus leave every morning and spend tons of time in prayer and this was unusual because only religious leaders uh, prayed very long prayers, and it seems like they only did so in public. So this was special. When they saw Jesus pray like this, like he was praying for a long time, but he did it in private, they're like, what's up with that? 
I, I think I want that. I think I want more of what you got right there. And he gave him the Lord's Prayer. But I don't want to talk about that. We've talked about that a lot, and, and we, we hear preaching on that a lot. I, what I want to talk about is a story that comes directly after the Lord's Prayer. It goes like this. Out of uh, Luke 11, verses 5 through 10, it goes like this. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. I want you to put yourself in this if you can. It, it makes it easy, so check it out. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight. So already, you're, I'm losing some of you, but just imagine it, okay? Imagine you go to a friend's house at midnight, and some of you like, this is not far-fetched. I was at a friend's house last night at midnight. Want, but here you go. You go to your friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. Okay? Like, I need bread. I need three loaves of bread. Hurry up. It's like, shoot. I, I, I'm all done with people around 830. I don't know about you guys, but um, I don't turn into a pumpkin at midnight like Cinderella's carriage. You, you know, I mean, do I have anybody old enough to know Cinderella? Yeah. Disney, okay? All right? I'm not that old. Really, I'm not. I don't turn into a pumpkin at midnight. I turn into a pumpkin around 8.15, 8.30. Anybody who's hung out with me about that time, you're like, what's wrong with Pastor Elliot? He's acting weird because <laughs> I'm sleepy and I'm a little old. But here you are at midnight in, some, in front of somebody's house and you're knocking on the door at midnight and you say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit. I have nothing for him to eat. Not my problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing here? And suppose he calls out to you from his bedroom. So this is your friend calling out to you. Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. Listen to this. I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake. Pause. It's, it's not based on your relationship. It's not based on how good you are. It's not based on whether you deserve the bread keep that. I want you to keep, I want you to hang on to that. Okay. That's, I have to skate over it, but I want you to hang on to that. Especially if you need that, you come to, I'm getting ahead of myself. You come to God sometimes. I don't know if I deserve this. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I've done enough for the church. I don't know if I've done this or that or the other thing. And I'm, I'm, I don't deserve to ask, but here, right here, Jesus is explaining about prayer, not based on friendship's sake, not for friendship's sake. If you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need. Man, you want bread? You want my cereal? You want my last cup of coffee? Whatever you need. It's midnight. My neighbors are turning on the lights. This is getting embarrassing. I'm going to give you whatever you need, not because we're friends, but because you won't leave me alone because of their, say these words with me, shameless, persi say it louder, shameless persistence shameless. If I had a title for today's message, it would be called shameless. I'm going to teach you, your pastor going to teach you how to be shameless. <laughs> I need bread. I need bread. I'm hungry. My friends are hungry. I need it. My relationship breaking down. I need this new, I need something. Come on. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I need this. My heart's broken. I need this. Please come to the door. I'm not leaving. It's, there's, there's a shamelessness about it because some people might leave when the neighbors start turning on their lights. Some people might leave when, when people are yelling, give him what he wants. The neighbor's yelling like, I'm getting annoyed here. It takes a bit of shamelessness to, to persist. And so now, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the, the coffee cup verse this is, the, this is what you put on the wall. You buy it from Hobby Lobby, and they've got it on the picture frame. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. I hear it in King James. I don't know about you. You will receive what you ask. It's so proper. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks the door will be, I'm not making fun, but we forget the story that preceded this was shameless. Somebody embarrassing themselves. It's, the story is actually about you. Suppose you went to your friend's house. The story is about you and how you ought to be shameless. Hmm. I think, I think that's what we should talk about today. I think we should get serious about prayer. 
because everybody I've ever met, everybody I've ever talked to in any real way has some things that they need, has some things that they want, needs some breakthrough in their life. I'll just ask you, is there anyone here that needs something? Anyone here that needs a breakthrough in their life? Anyone here that needs a relationship restored? Anything. The story was about three loaves of bread. If you've got a need even more serious than that, how much more shameless should you be? So I'm going to give you some some things. I'm going to give you some things that you can do to be a little more shameless in your prayer life. And maybe you've never even had a prayer life before, but I hope this starts it for you. Number one is this, continue to make prayer a priority. I'm a list person, so I made a little list of things that I think will, will really help you get better at this. Continue or even start, maybe that's what I could have said, start making prayer a priority, because God will answer your prayer all day long, but there is something about first things. Priority means it's first. Priority means I do this first. Uh, the very first message in this whole series was called Pray First. You can go back on YouTube. You can go back on Facebook. You can watch that there, so I'm not going to labor on that too long, but I've got a, a, a different verse about it. Psalm 5, 3 says this, in the morning, say morning. morning, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay down my request before you and I wait expectantly. There's something special about that time. There's something special about first things, what you do first. I'm not saying you can't get a cup of that magical bean juice and then get going. I'm saying, like, what are you intentionally doing first with your own time, saying, what, what am I creating space for first in my life? Uh, so that's, that's the Old Testament. That's Psalms. Well, what about the New Testament? The New Testament comes along and says, pray continually. Pray, pray all the time. But I still believe that there's something special about starting with prayer first and then continuing it on. Uh, this means prayer needs to look a little bit differently in your mind than maybe it's looked like uh, before. I, I'm a huge believer of intentional time with God in the morning. You can call it quiet time. You can call it devotional time, devos. That's what I call it in my calendar. It's in my calendar, actually. It's a block out. Like, I don't let, I, I don't schedule meetings there. I don't do anything. It's devo. And it's, it's important to me, so I put it on there, right? Devo time. Devotional. Short for devotional. I do that in the morning, but, but this praying continually throughout the day, uh, what it looks like is having face time with God, but then you know, going from that and having a texting relationship with him all day. That's what it looks like to me. That's what I thought of is like, I connect with Tiffany in the morning. I don't leave the house without giving her like a kiss or something like that. Oh, that's so sweet, isn't it? Uh, it got weird just now. But like, I connect with my wife first in the morning. Like I see her, I say hi. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long, but like just saying hi, whatever. And then we go throughout the day. And then all day, it's like, where are you at? You at home? I just got home. What's for dinner? How did that meeting go? What's up? What's? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it is what I ask sometimes. What are all these boxes from Amazon? Like, whatever I'm texting, whatever I'm texting, but it's like the communication goes all day. We have an ongoing relationship all day long of communication, and so there's both and. It's a, it's a fa- we don't only text with each other. We, ha- we spend intentional time together, but we also text. So that's what it should be like with God. We have intentional time in the morning arguably, scripturally, priorities is morning, but also texting with him all day. Um, I, I would ask you this question. I would ask you this question. Uh, actually, this is a question you can ask yourself, all right? I posed, it, I posed it in a way so you can ask yourself, what would I have to rearrange to make prayer the priority? What would I have to rearrange? You know, speaking to that face-to-face time, you know, maybe going to bed just a couple minutes earlier will help you get out of bed a couple minutes earlier so that you can have a little bit more, man, I'm just meddling all up in your business right now. I think I got some eye rolls right now. I can even see it in this dark room. You're like, don't tell me what time to go to bed, pastor. Think you're all bad. No, I'll go to bed when I, I don't care. I'm just saying, I'm saying, what might you rearrange so that you can be more shamelessly persistent in communicating with God, because if you knew he was the one that answered your prayers and could do things that you never could, there might be more priority on it. And I, I'll just be honest with you. I'm discovering that even more and more myself, more and more myself. Rearrange something so you can make prayer the priority. Maybe, um, maybe turning off the radio on the drive to work and using that time to pray, okay? These are just practical things, but I'm asking you, what could you rearrange to make prayer more of a priority in your life. Number two is this, find a dedicated place to pray. 
a dedicated place to pray. It doesn't have to be the only place that you pray, but there is scripture that, that helps us understand having a place can help. Uh, Mark 1.35 says, very early in the morning, there it is again, Jesus prays in the morning. While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place. He went to a place where he was by himself, where he prayed. And for Jesus, this was probably the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, at least when he was in Jerusalem, it was there. They traveled a lot. But it's, it's pretty clear in the Bible that he would often go to all by himself. But the Garden of Gethsemane is where he, he prayed the drops of blood. He was praying, trying to get out of the cross. You, maybe you remember the story, not my will, but yours be done. And he was so, and then he told his disciples, can't you pray for one hour? That was his spot. And in Israel, I will find out for myself soon because I'm going to Israel this year for the very first time in my life. I'm so fired up about it. And I hope to be able to offer trips to all of us soon that are affordable enough for all of us to reach that's a whole nother story, though. <laughs> I'm going in November. Pray for me. Um, I, I'm really, really looking forward to it. But the Garden of Gethsemane, it goes up to the Mount of Olives. That's kind of like uh, the most photogenic place anywhere. Like all the selfies come from there. Everybody who takes pictures because it overlooks the whole city. So Jesus, we find, went to a place that was conducive for him to pray because he could see everything. It was beautiful to him. It was, I mean, he was just, I mean, honestly, he was human while he was here. So he, humanly speaking, went to a place was, that was conducive for him, that worked for him. It was a place where he could pray and have time to himself to do that. Having a place might just change your whole prayer life. Having a dedicated place, spending just a little bit of time setting it up, getting it ready, and, and, and making it a place where you got certain pictures there, maybe you got a little map there, you got pictures of the people you're praying for, you got your lists and your outline right there, like just a little place. I've heard of like prayer closets, but for me, I cannot sit still. I like to walk and talk. I'm just a talker and a walker. Even right here, I'm fighting every inch of my natural thing to like want to pace back and forth like a lion trapped in a cage. I'm just like, oh. But I don't, that, I think that would make everyone nervous. So I, I try to stay still. But when I'm talking, I like to pace around. So I, I set up my garage to be a space. It's, it's remodeled into an office. Okay, it's not just like with the cars. But even if it was for you, like even if it was, set up a place for you. Get some place ready. It might just set you up for success in this most extreme area of your life, actually having prayer time, actually having prayer time. My, my question to you is this, what place would be most conducive for you to pray effectively? I want you to ask yourself that. I want you to answer that. Maybe it needs to be quiet. Some of you are so outgoing, you need to be around people, like it's a coffee shop or something. I can't understand that. Everybody thinks I'm outgoing and crazy, but I need quiet because if I hear one little thing, I'm like, huh? I'm like anybody else. My phone buzzes, I'm out of the moment. My phone buzzes or, or you know, I got places to go. I got people to see. You know, it, it gets crazy, you know, and I'm just trying to let you know that happens to everybody. Even Jesus went away to a solitary place. You know, maybe, maybe we should too. Is, is your place private? Is it public? Is it noisy? Is it secluded? Um, I go to my place every morning, but I also have a plan, which leads me to number three. Have a plan for your prayer. Have a plan for prayer. Now, we talked a lot about this a couple weeks ago with the tabernacle prayer. Um, I don't know if you were here for that, but you can go back a couple weeks ago on YouTube. You go on Facebook and check this out. Having an outline has changed my life, has changed my prayer life, but my prayer life has changed my actual life. Um, we, we talked about this, and so I don't want to spend like too much time on it, but it, what the prayer, what the prayer outline does, it does not necessarily make your prayers more attractive to God. It's, it's not for the, him as much as it is for you. It keeps you on track. It keeps you on priority. Cause if you make a list of things that are important to you, when you walk into the moment with no list, whatever's most important to you is like, what? The, the, the phone's buzzing. People are going, whatever. But if you have a list of things, like I want to be praying for my job every day. You may not be thinking about your job every day, but if you have a priority list, if you have any kind of outline that'll help you, it could change your consistency and your persistence, which Jesus tells us is very important to be persistent in asking for the things that you really, really want. So it creates priority. If you have a list, if you have an outline, something, it creates priority, keeps you from getting bored, keeps you from checking your phone. Like I, it, this has changed everything for me. So I want to remind you again about the Pray First app that we have available to you. Um, I think there's a code there. 
Um, and you can get with anybody wearing a Dream Team badge. They'll help you get that on your phone. The little app, I should have put it up there, but it just says Pray First on it. So if you go into the, the Play Store or the iStore, whatever, I don't even know what it's called. I don't have an iPhone. <gasps> the iStore? It's an iStore. <laughs> I'm so cool right now. I feel so cool right now. It's just called Pray First, and it has all the outlines in it. I've been in love with the Tabernacle Prayer. It has changed my life, absolutely. Get that app if you've never looked at it, and it just guides you through. And choose the prayer that works for you. I, 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 have, I have to admit some things to you. I, I've been in love with that Tabernacle Prayer. I accidentally prayed for 50 minutes the other day. And that's not a brag either. I'm like confessing to you that I don't normally do that. I don't know what people think pastors are or they do, but... We're busy too. You know, we've got lives too. 50 minutes is a long time. But I was in this list and I, I actually like added some things on myself and I was praying through. I, I was like 30 minutes in. I didn't even get to the stuff I was fired up about yet. It has changed my life. I accidentally like was late to my next thing because I was in prayer. That hardly, if ever, has happened to me before, but it started happening to me since I got a plan. You do not have to be a pastor to do this. You do not have to be a Bible college student to have this. Every single person who even attends this church can have a vibrant, powerful prayer life. And it could just be, do you have a plan? Do you have a place? Those simple questions could change everything for you. I, I wrote these things down. I was just thankful. I went through it. And 20 minutes in, I was like barely getting started. It was amazing. It was amazing. It's, it's changed everything for me. So Luke 11, 1 and 2, I just have to give a verse for this model idea. Jesus was in a certain place praying, and as he finished, one of the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, Jesus was gone more than 26 seconds. He didn't just say that. He didn't just say that prayer and then come back. He was gone so long, he was praying through the elements of that prayer. My Father who is in heaven, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to praise you as my father. I'm going to talk about you as a father. I'm your son. And kind of like just let that happen, right? So these, these lists help us to stay on track, help us to stay on track. It wasn't just a memorized thing. This, these were Jews he was talking to, by the way. I don't know if you realize this, but Jews memorized a lot of stuff, <laughs> all right? They memorized like the whole like Torah by the time they're a certain age, especially if they go in to become a priest or something like that. They have to memorize prayer. Just to have a bar mitzvah, you have to memorize certain prayer. Like memorizing prayer is not novel to them. So when they came to Jesus and said, bro, teach us what you're doing there. He said, okay, I'm going to give you a model because Jesus was gone way too long for it just to be some memorization. It was bigger than that. It was deeper than that. It was a heart thing. It was a heart thing. So my, my question to you, your question for yourself is what makes prayer easy, interesting, and effective? This plan should make prayer easy to engage with. It's your stuff. It's your stuff. Like you can go on the app and you can follow along that, or you can just make something for yourself. It doesn't have to be complicated. You have the ability to come up with your own little boop, 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 little list and just follow along. What makes prayer easy? Because it should be fun. It should be something that you're looking forward to a little bit. It should be something that you're going, hey, God, it's good to talk to you. I guess I got my stuff. I'm ready to go. Let's talk about this. He's almost communicating. You know, there's a right and wrong way to talk to your spouse too. If you come in, no idea. It's like, it's date night and I'm guilty of this time and time again. You pull out of the driveway. Where do you want to go? That's the, that's the last question you want to be asking when you're already in the car. Men, you ought to be ready. And I have not always been right? So it's, it's better, even in that context, to have a plan. Be ready. Have something going. If the plan changes, fine. It will. But have a plan going in there, man. That's, he's our father in heaven. We should have a plan for this. But anyways, I, I digress and want to keep on moving here. Number four is this. Number four is this, is to pray with energy and power. Pray with energy and power. Um, there's been a chance, there's a chance that you've been trained the opposite way especially if you grew up in church or maybe like watched some TV shows that portrayed church a certain way. Maybe you were taught that, you know, a prayer meeting is shh, shh. You know, you come into church and it's, you know, right over left, left over right, whatever, and you're right here. 
All right, you better not do anything. You better just stay right there. You know, but the Bible talks very clearly about lift your head. Let everyone lift up a shout of praise. Lift your arms. Clap your hands, all you people. Like this is New Testament, Old Testament. This is all over the place. I believe, this is a strong statement, but I believe it's the devil that wants our prayers to be quiet, weak, faithless, just like make it really small. Don't, no, no, nobody can hear you. Don't knock too loud because then people, you want to be polite. You know, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's the way God really wants it. All throughout the Bible, he's like, man, you ought to lift up a shout of triumph. Man, we ought to lift up our hands in the sanctuary. We ought to be going for it in our prayer time. Like there should be some energy there. There's a scripture on this and I'm going to show it to you. And this is, this is, this is so powerful. James 5, 16 says, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective fervent, those two words are two words in the English, but in Greek, it's only one word, energeo. It sounds like energy because that's where we get the word energy. All right. That's just what it means. Like the energetic prayer of a righteous person avails much to have some energy, to have some power, to actually have some gusto in there. Say, Lord, I need this. I need this. Or if you're in church in worship and it's like, well, no, I can't let anybody see me, you know, praise the Lord. I can't let anybody, I don't want any eyes, no eyes on me. It's the respectful thing to do. (laughs) Lift your hands, all you people. Clap your hands. Oh, everybody, let's do this. Lift up a shout of praise, shout of triumph. Man, like during the, the message, like some of you might be thinking like, and I know this is a little hard, like saying a little amen. Amen. It's like the best you got. That's, that's the next level for you. And hey, get down with your bad self. Like if that's what you got, go to the next level. You know, maybe you're not at, you know, uh, uh, football. You know, maybe you're not at uh, touchdown level yet. You know, maybe you're just, maybe hold the baby. Just hold the baby. Right here, hold the baby. You know, maybe you caught a fish that was this big. You know, may, whatever, maybe your toe is saved <laughs> down here where nobody can see you and you need to get a little bit of this going on here. You don't mind doing this somewhere else, but like in church, come on. The Bible talks about us treating praise and worship and prayer more like our favorite football team. That is much more accurate. Like fo- uh, football stadiums are filled with praisers <laughs> more than most churches. Oh, Go easy, man. Chill out. Like, go easy. on. And I'm just asking you to do only this. Just what's your next step? Your, what's your next step? You know, I was in another church this last week. And, uh, um, you know, I, I was in a Baptist church once. And I asked them, I asked them, I said, how many of you don't raise your hand in church? And they all went. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> That's funny. I don't care. I don't care what y'all think. Like, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. That was funny. That was really funny. I imagined in my mind, everybody, (laughs) heck of funny. (laughs) What hurdle will you have to overcome for you? What, where are you at? Assess where you're at. And what's next for you to have more energy, more, more energy, effective, fervent prayer. Maybe you've never prayed out loud before. Bingo, bingo. I know it's a little scary, but praying out loud is going to create more. And it's not for him. It's for you. It, it draws your heart in. Um, maybe you've never tried listening to worship music, like instrumental stuff. I'm in love with that right now. Just the instrumental music happening while I'm praying. And then like sometimes it gets a little bigger. Sometimes it just helps me. It doesn't make my prayer any more useful to God. It helps me have more energy in my prayer time. This is, this is more for you than it is for God. God just wants you to pray. He just wants you to pray. He heard my silly prayer when I was sitting on that box spring mattress and just I mouthed it. He heard me. But to have an ongoing, shamelessly persistent prayer life, I'm asking you, what can you do to have a more energetic prayer life? And I don't care if this is your first time to church. Do you have anything that you want and need in life? And I'm not talking about Lamborghinis. I think everyone knows what that means is like something significant, something important to you, something that matters. Don't make excuses not to to passionately go after that. Passionately go after God. I'm not asking you to be Moses. I'm just asking you to what's your next step. The last one is this, number five. Number five is this, last one. We're gonna be all done here really soon is uh, pray shamelessly and persistently. Could you have guessed I was gonna say that? This is so important. 
This is so important. Pray shamelessly and persistently. I know what it feels like to have a dry spell. Pastor or not, I gotta be real with you. I know what it feels like to feel dry, to feel empty, to feel like my prayers are hitting the ceiling. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you're there right now and you feel like, man, I just, I don't, I don't feel this at all. I don't even know what it means to have an effective prayer life. I have no clue. I wanna encourage you with this verse. Ephesians 6, 18. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert, always keep on praying. Don't give up, just keep going, keep praying. It's not because of your friendship with the person you're knocking on their door. It's not because of your relationship with them. It's not because you deserve it, because you earned it. It's because of your persistence. It's because you kept on asking. What if you're just a few knocks away from getting the breakthrough in that area that God cares about so much, but he's just waiting for you to ask. He's just waiting for you to reach out about it. He's waiting for you to like, son, daughter, I want to help you. But I'm trying to teach you something here is that I want you to have some faith for it. I want you to come to me, ask for it so that I can pour out my blessing on you. I'm gonna get real with you just this week. Normally I wait longer for stories, you know, to mature a little bit, but this just happened this week because I, I started a prayer plan, you know, in my prayer place and my prayer life has been growing a lot. And I, I don't look old enough, but I'm kind of like a hybrid empty nester. I have a 19 year old son who's out of the house. You know, I barely see him anymore because he lives out of town and he works and he's got his own life. But I've always felt like, man, I wanna spend more time with him. I miss him. Come on back, come on, let's, let's go. He's got his own life, it's all good. But at the same time, I wanted something. I wanted something. And so you know how it is when someone asks you if you're praying for it and it's usually your spouse that does this. Are you praying for that? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. But you're really not. Yeah. So I, so I put his name on there. I put his name on there. And every day I was just praying. And this is only like a couple weeks. A couple weeks. And it had been like, Six, seven months, hadn't seen him. He's just been doing his own program, working over there. And, and out of the blue, out of the blue, my, my mom texted me, said, Corbin and I are coming for a visit. And they stayed all day this last Wednesday. You will never tell me. You will never convince me that it wasn't my prayers that did it. I knew it. Because God has been answering all kinds of prayers that I can't even talk about. Prayers for you, prayers for the church, prayers for all kinds of things. He's been going to town lately and I've been begging for, for you guys to see it too. And so I just wanted to share one that God was like, watch this, got it. You, it changed me because I saw something that I had, I've seen answers to prayer before, but I've never seen it so quick where just like 14 days of consistency, bam, here you go. Is there something you need in life? Is there something you want? Is there something that you're going for? I ask you this, are you consistently, shamelessly persistent in asking for it over and over again every single day? You might think it's just, like it might even feel shallow. Not to God. God wants to show up in your life. He wants to show you that he's a God who answers prayer and he can answer your prayer. I'm telling you guys, if you, oh, I want you to have it. I want you to have an experience like that. I wanna hear the story, but I want you to have it. I want you to see it. Maybe it's a loved one. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a child, a wayward child. Maybe it's, maybe it's a career. You hate your job and you just wanna get out of it. You don't know what to do though. Send it up to him. See what he can do. Maybe it is a health issue. Maybe it's financial. Don't feel bad about whatever it is. If it's on your heart and taxing you, hand it over to God. See what he can do. Oh, I want it for you so bad. I, I really, I hope I'm coming across right. I hope you're hearing my heart in this church. This 21 days of prayer is no joke to us. It's no joke at all. And it, it can make all the difference in the whole world. It is not a shallow response to say, I'm praying for you. 
or to say, I'm going to pray about that. If you actually do it, you're contending to the God of heaven who has all control, all power to step in and make a difference in your life. What do you have to lose? What do you have to gain? If you have something that you need in your life, guys, I just, I want you to have it. I want every person here to experience answer to prayer like I just experienced it. And I know I'm nothing special. I know you can have this. And if you feel like I'm not good enough, I'm not, you know, my relationship isn't good enough, Jesus talked about that. It's not based on your relationship. It's not based on anything else except coming to him. It's not because of your friendship's sake, Jesus said, that he's gonna get up and give you what you need. It's based on your, it's, it's not what, so don't get condemned. Don't feel like I don't deserve it. I'm, I don't know enough Bible. Well, I haven't been coming to church enough. I haven't been serving enough. I haven't gone through growth track like they always talk about. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. Forget about all that for now. Well, don't forget about growth track. Go to it. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm just trying to communicate. Don't let anything stand in your way. Don't let anything stand in your way of coming to, coming to God and asking for what you need. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. That was a good time to pray. Father, I pray for every single person here, especially those who, who feel that way, who feel distant from God, who, who feel separated from you in some way. But I, I pray right now that their hearts would be open, their minds would be open to receive a life-giving touch from you and for them to experience a changed relationship now and forevermore. I pray for two groups of people. Number one, people who used to have a relationship with God but have, have strayed, have gone away or, or just, gone, just gone cold. That, that relationship never, there's nothing terrible that happened or maybe something did happen that kind of drove you away. But you used to have a relationship with him but now you're ready to come back and say, you know what God, it wasn't you that moved, it was me and I'm coming back. And I want to pray for another group of people that have never really experienced a true life-giving relationship with the creator of heaven and earth. And I want to offer that to you today. It is so accessible. You are ready. I'm telling you, you are ready. You can have it. All you need to do is seek him. All you need to do is look to him and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. And if that's you today, I want to pray for you specifically. So if you would, just lift your hand up for me so I can see who I'm praying for. Go ahead. It's all right. You can do it. Let's all lift our hands up. I see you. I see you. I see you. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hallelujah. That's great. I'll, I see you too and you. Yes. Yes. Let's be bold and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to come home. I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to do this. Church, what I'd like to do, what we always do, let's pray together. Let's pray as a family. No one's praying alone today. Let's pray this prayer. And, and if it's your heart, even if you weren't brave enough to raise your hand, that's okay too. It's really what happens between your heart and him. So let's all pray together. If you would, just repeat after me. Let's say this. Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin and make me new. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Fill me with your spirit and show me the path that I should take. Amen.